It's the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. But it's not just any Ross Tucker Football Podcast. It is a Monster Monday presented by DraftKings. I am joined by my college buddy today, the star of Good Morning Football, Kyle Brandt, who's in Australia for some unknown reason. Get to Kyle momentarily, college teammate, roommate. If you guys are longtime listeners, you know he's been on probably about once a year, I would guess. It's a new week, by the way, which means we'll have a new Spread the Word winner via social media. I love those of you that engage, just like Maverick and Top Gun, in any way. Quote, tweet, share on Facebook, reply, like, Love, I don't care, at Ross Tucker NFL, engage in any way I notice. I pick a winner. I send you something signed in the mail. You can also always do that with at Ross Tucker Pod, which is the show's handle as well. Sponsor confirmation email winner. You guys know the deal there. I'll tell you today about ExpressVPN, which is actually pretty legit, especially if you're like in Australia and you need to make sure you have a way to block your IP address like Kyle right now. I'll tell you more about that a little bit later. And then the YouTube shout out, youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL. Just subscribe and then go ahead and comment on any of the videos. There's actually a bunch of like league wide news to get to since Thursday's show with Greg Cosell. We've got rosters, race norming, Tordal, they're trying to get rid of Tordal. I'll have a lot to say about that as well. But first, it's Big Show time. The Big Show. All right, so most of you already know this, but we get new listeners and new viewers all the time. Today's guest is one of my best friends in the world. My wife absolutely adores him because (laughs) Kyle's just real. Kyle's just so (laughs) real and genuine and authentic. Loves this dude. He is literally the star of Good Morning Football. And since the last time we did this show, he started one of the most popular podcasts in the galaxy called 10 Questions, which is amazing. Since the last time he came on, since the last time he came to my house, you can check him out on social media at Kyle Brandt. It is 6.15 a.m. Eastern Time, 8.15 p.m. Sydney Time, which is why <laughs> Kyle looks so lit up there. What, what is going on? Well, first of all, thank you for coming on the show, blah, blah, blah. Why yeah. are you in Australia? What are you doing? All right. I'm glad you asked. I, I've, I've, been, I've been dancing around how to describe this and what phrase I should use, and I've settled on this. Check this out. See what you think. I'm in Australia. On assignment. Yeah. That's how I'm using it. On assignment. It's a secret mission. I'm down here on work. I'm in Sydney, Australia. I'm actually talking to you, dude, from the future. Like, I am 13 hours ahead of you right now. You just woke up. It's the earliest podcast ever recorded. And I'm doing, uh, it's like 9 o'clock. I got to tell you, dude, there's a lot of things in Australia that are cool. A lot of things already drive me crazy. All of the clocks are on that 24-hour thing. So I'm looking at the stupid digital clock in my microwave right now, and it says 2023. And I'm so jet-lagged and weirded out, I can't subtract 12. So I'm, I don't know what time is that, 1 o'clock? I have no idea what it is, uh, but that's what it is. 2024 now, that's where I'm joining you from. That is amazing. Yeah. So, okay, you're on assignment. So yeah. obviously on you assignment. don't go to Australia on like a weekend assignment. So you're there. you're there for a decent amount of time. Indecent, I think, actually, is the expression. I go right past decent to indecent. I'm here for like, I've been, this is the, the other phrase I've been using is, you know, I'll be emailing like work people and I'll be like, thank you for reaching out. Uh, I'll be in, on assignment in Australia for several weeks. It just sounds so cool. It's like I'm James Bond in Monaco playing cards or something. Like I'm trying to make it sound as cool as possible. Where in reality, I'm sitting here in my sweatpants and my Ugg slippers and I had two ho-hos for dinner. So it's not sexy in any way, but it sounds cool. I'm here on assignment for several weeks, Ross. So first of all, uh, yeah. saying you're on assignment is amazing. I love yeah. saying that when I'm away. I, I like I love that. <laughs> I love saying on assignment. It sounds amazing. And Australia is amazing. One of our awesome listeners, the guy that actually 
grades us on the Even Money podcast. Like he grades our bets. Mm -hmm. His name is Sean Grady, lives in Australia. We call him Grades. Like that's his nickname. Isn't that unbelievable? His last name's Grady, and he grades our our oh, bets that's awesome. on the Even Money podcast. But he's joined every time we do like uh, with the patrons, every time we do a happy hour, he's the one that sets it up on his Zoom. So Kyle, it'll be like eight o'clock at night. Yeah. And because we're doing a Zoom, whatever, it'll be noon. And he'll be on this happy hour with us from his house in Australia. And he's on, he's like, he's like, yeah, I'm supposed to be working right now. I'm kind of working, whatever. He sets it up. So anyway, people in Australia are amazing. Um, right when I, and we never talked about this, right when I retired from football, um, my wife and I went on a trip to New Zealand and Australia. We spent uh, a week, almost a week at Hayman Island. It's like some awesome island. Really? Off of Sydney, off of the northeast coast of Sydney, it's amazing. I can tell you a bunch of stories there. And obviously, Sydney, we did the opera house, we did the bridge thing, we did all that stuff, man. It was amazing. See, I I think of you and Kara going on a trip around your football retirement when you went on that uh, like ill-fated road trip where we had to turn around in Cleveland because your back hurt. Like that's a totally different trip, right? <laughs> that was when <laughs> Buffalo cut me after right. my back surgery. Yeah. And the idea of being in central Pennsylvania, just like waiting for a call yeah. was horrible to me. I, I just couldn't, it felt like a waste of time. So we got the idea to do a cross country RV trip. Tell me this isn't galactically stupid, by the way, Kyle. Okay, go on. You get a call almost every week to go try <laughs> out, like somebody like, like, the, like the right guard in Detroit gets hurt. Sure. So they call you Sunday night. You're on a plane Monday. Yeah. You work out Tuesday. They tell you whether or not you're signed. You fly back. Like our idea was we would just go and wherever I was, I would go and fly to that city and right. do the workout while Kara was with the RV. How stupid is that? Like, first of all, yeah. it's not good for working out. To be in a motorhome. <laughs> Secondly, I'm going to leave my like 25 year old wife at these like random motorhome places so that I like it was like for two smart people. It was yeah. one of the dumbest ideas of all time. Driving the motorhome killed my back. We made it to Cincinnati. My former teammate Alex <laughs> Sulfstead, and we were like, "This is the worst idea ever. It hurts my back." Like. And we turned around. We didn't even make it past a contiguous state. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a bad plan. I am picturing a scenario by which you have to tell Kara, like, all right, honey, here's the deal. You're going to stay at this uh, this KOA campground in Omaha, Nebraska, and I'm going to fly to Trout for the Jets for a job I'm not going to get, and then I'm going to come back and we'll restart the trip. And aside from all the football stuff, Ross, I'm just thinking of what I know of you. Never mind football. Never mind your back anything. I just hate the idea of you cooped up into an RV. Like, you would go crazy. You're too big and too sweaty and too, like, possessive of your space. Like, the whole thing was a disaster. Terrible, terrible idea. Yeah. What terrible. is a good idea yeah. Is the podcast you started yeah. for The Ringer and Spotify, 10 questions. This is what's weird about life and time. Okay. You were here at my house with your family yeah. last August, okay? Mm -hmm. And so we're only talking 10 months later. Yeah. Since then, you started a really popular podcast. You've had a bunch of awesome guests on. It's a thing that people enjoy and talk about and like, and you've had second series or whatever. Like, isn't that weird? It feels like that was longer than 10 months ago, but I guess it wasn't. Or maybe it was a little bit longer. I don't know. Well, it was a great trip, first of all. Hell of a, you guys are the best hosts I, I know. Incredible. So the thing I always like about going and staying with you is that, like, you're always going to eat. Like, there's never, there's always going to be enough food. And then you guys did a, a sushi spread and a pizza spread. It was unbelievable. And I remember that about the podcast because it was first coming together. That was like the real formative days. And like, you know, you're this like old, like Obi Wan Kenobi of podcasts, like the wise sage. And you've got this incredible setup. And like, I'm like, I'm trying to connect to audio on the Zoom. I'm like, I'm a rookie. <laughs> but I remember I stepped out of dinner and I walked into, I don't want to, you know, brag for you, Ross. But Ross has this nice room where there's a piano. It's a grand piano. And I'm standing by it. You can't hide money. 
I'm standing by it, and I had two text threads going. One was um, I had just a couple weeks ago done an Aaron Rodgers episode, and like I was having a correspondence with him about like when it was coming out, and then also I was trying to book Guy Fieri to come on which was the next episode we did. So like, if you looked at my phone, it was like the coolest phone ever. And my text message would be like, Brooke Brandt, Aaron Rodgers, a Guy Fieri, and then like Peter Schrager or something. But it was pretty good top four. That's amazing. So here's the thing I've never understood. Like your first episode is Aaron freaking Rodgers. And not just Aaron Rodgers, dude. He's like drinking whiskey or something. like The whole time. Like that. So I don't know that I've ever seen that like I, I don't think I've, I don't know I've ever seen a star quarterback I mean I, I've probably seen a star quarterback be somebody's first episode but like he just comes on and he's drinking whiskey like he just decided you know what I, I think well I think that might have been the first time because then in this during the season he did a weekly thing with Pat McAfee yeah. whatever but I honestly think your show is when Aaron Rodgers started his 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 bleep you routine yeah. like i'm just gonna go dominate this season dominate every interview i don't give a bleep anymore i think it started with your show it might have because i remember what you're talking about with the whiskey so put me put yourself in the situation anybody listening you watch podcasts maybe you do them yourself these days it's always about you know the the, the virtual window and everything and so let's say i had agreed with him we we're gonna meet at 6 15 and come on in and like You go and you get there early and you got, you know, whoever's crew is helping you out. And then there's this like tense moment where you look at your watch. It's like, oh my God, 615. Is this really going to happen? Is this massive whale of a guest really going to show up? And then all of a sudden it's like, you know, Aaron has joined the room and there they are. And it's this really exhilarating moment. And I remember I looked up at him and he's got one of these, you know, cheesy, like starry night fake backgrounds that we were all playing with a year ago when, you know, quarantine was still new. And he had... What appeared to be like like a bucket of scotch in his hand, like a re- like at five fingers, whatever the hell it was. And I remember thinking, like, I need to nail this. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Like the night that, that Jerry Maguire writes the memo or the mission statement that gets him fired, Tom Cruise has that line where he's like, Nights like this don't come along very often. I seized it. And when he so when he had the whiskey and he's pulling from it aggr- pulling from it like aggressively, I'm like this this the opportunities don't come along. I, I could do this 80 years and I will never get, you know, the best quarterback in the world, like get day drinking scotch, ready to talk about whatever I want with no time limits. Dude, we talked for an hour and a half. That's a once in a lifetime interview. And I'm like, I, I got to maximize this thing. Well, you did. And obviously you've been building on it ever since. Uh, very proud of you. Love the show. Thanks, man. I've watched several episodes. It's awesome. I also love... You've kind of become the guy that like cuts promos. I've seen them for the Bills. <laughs> I've seen for the Eagles. So, so here's the thing about Kyle now. Okay, everybody needs to have people in their life that they're just blatantly honest with, right? Like mm. they just say what it is. And that's by the way why my wife loves Kyle. Is Kyle just just says like the truth, right? So I got to be honest with you. Kyle is very popular among Eagles fans for videos he's done over the last few years. He's also very popular among Bills fans for the videos he did, especially last year. So I have been an Eagles fan since I was five years old. I now do Eagles pregame. I do Eagles uh, preseason television, okay? I played three years for the Buffalo Bills. It's the team I have the greatest affinity for. (laughs) I would be lying, Kyle, if there wasn't part of me that isn't like, what the heck is going on? First of all, I should be cutting those promos. Secondly, do those people know you're a Bears fan? You are a Bears fan. You've always been a Bears fan. You'll always be a Bears fan. I watch these promos, and I'm like, these people don't even know he's a Bears fan. This is this is yeah. this is ridiculous. Keep going. It's all coming out. Let the healing begin. Uh, it's just <laughs> listen, Ross. When I was when I was standing there that day um, on the Rocky Steps on the day of the Philadelphia Eagles Super Bowl party, and I was hanging with Randall Cunningham and Brian Westbrook and all us like OG Eagles guys, we were talking about the true meaning of being a Philadelphia fan. 
And um, it's not, I'm not sure it's something you would understand. You never did play for the Eagles. You're a fan, big deal. There's thousands of fans. To really be in the inner circle, you have that true understanding. But listen, um, I understand you're jealous. I would be jealous. But uh, I, I'm glad you brought this up because I get this all the time. And I think it's, it's an interesting conversation about media members and fan bases. So I get that. They're like, hold on a second. Like, I thought you were an Eagles fan. Oh, oh, you're a, a Bills fan now. Oh, you're a Browns fan? Wait, you're a Bears fan. I'm not a fan of anybody, and that includes the Bears. I was as a kid, and here's how I define it. Um, I don't care if the Bears lose. Like, if the I, I was born and raised in Chicago. I grew up with Walter Payton bed sheets, all that stuff. But I don't care if they lose now. I like to see good things happen for them. I get excited about what they do. But, like, if they lose, I'm like, oh, those idiots. I'm not down. I'm not upset about it. And as far as, like, the Bills and the Eagles, I've never said I'm a fan of theirs. I'm not. I did that Bills promo, the first one. The first thing I said was, I've never even been to Buffalo. I have no idea what it's about. But when the playoffs start, you start to have a feel about some teams. And sometimes those teams are not the front runners. And if you start screaming about that feeling, genuinely, people like it. Yeah, I, it was awesome. Although, wait a minute. You kind of can't have it both ways. What do you mean? C well, I saw the video you did when the Bears drafted Justin Fields. Yeah. And and you made it like, uh, we've been waiting our whole lives for this. I'm so proud yeah. of them. So yeah. you can't now say you're not a Bears fan and then do the video where you're like, we. I, I'm just so proud of them. By the way, I thought mm -hmm. that knowing you, that was totally real, and I know that you felt that way. You were proud of the Bears for moving up into acting Justin. That wasn't that wasn't fake. You know, but I, w I was. However, I would counter to that. That feeling of pride is not just attached to um, a, the Bears fan that I grew up with. Like, I'll, I'll tell you something. I was really proud of the Browns, like, when they won that playoff game against Pittsburgh. I, I like, had this genuine feeling of, of nurturing, almost parental-like, and I know where it comes from. It, it comes from, like, I have a background in sports radio where I worked for Rome for years and years. And so when you do that, especially if it's, a, like, a national show, like, you get the Cleveland callers and you get the Buffalo callers and the Detroit callers. And, like, you kind of – they become a character in your life and you become an attachment to them. So, sure, I was proud of the Bears because the, the Bears, like, hung their balls out there. It was an incredible move. But I feel proud of different teams, too. I was, weren't, you, weren't you in your own way, even if you weren't a player, even if you would never played for them? Last season, weren't you proud of the Buffalo Bills? I was. A thousand percent. I root for the Bills, and not just because I played there, but because those people deserve it. I root for the Browns. I, I have said for a long time, I think the Browns have the best fans in the NFL. And people get all upset about it. Look, I, I, there's amazing Steelers fans, Eagles, Cowboys, Raiders. I get it, right? The Browns fans are so loyal. And so diehard. And for the last 20 years, their team hasn't even really given them hope. I mean, not even hope. I know. And yet they still, when I had a radio show on Sirius XM, they would call all the time. Every year. I see the tweets. I said, I mean, that I think that they are the most loyal fans in sports. Nobody's ditched them. Browns fans are Browns fans are Browns fans. Um, and I love, it. all right, I got two more for you, by the way, this got? always happens. Like <laughs> I, I've got like, I could have 20 more for Kyle, but I try to keep the show to 30 minutes because I respect that. That's your workout time, your commute time. Plus I like to leave a little bit more, right? Like we'll yeah. have to have Kyle on after we find out what his assignment was, <laughs> he'll have to be on the show again. All right. This is a random question. Okay. Yeah. But you'll know where yeah. I'm going with it. How does your body feel? And I don't mean like the working out. I've seen your video. I've seen like no, you're in great you mean. shape. I mean, do you have any lingering effects of playing high school and college football? Because to those of you who don't know, Kyle was our starting running back at Princeton for like three years. Like Kyle was a Division I starting running back, which is very hard to do, and he was very good. How does your body feel? Like, do you have aches and pains from college football? Yeah, they're coming up. Here's the thing. And anybody listening who played high school or college football could relate to this, too. I got I won the um, the running back Powerball. And let me tell you what I mean. I played uh, nine years of running back, and I never had the big knee injury. I never had the big elbow injury. I never had the ACL, the MCL, any of that stuff. 
So I got really lucky. Never separated a shoulder. Never tore whoa, whoa, a labrum. Whoa, 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 I was there when your elbow bent the other way, dude. All right. But here's the thing. My elbow did go on the other way. My elbow was on backwards. And the last carry of my football career, the last play was against Penn senior year, who, like, I hope that entire program rots in hell. I hate them. But um, <laughs> I dislocated my elbow. You know who I was talking crap to about Penn, Ross? Like, the prince of Penn right now, Stefanski. And he is, like, he was saying all this stuff about, like, uh, oh, Kyle Branch just, you know, doesn't like Penn because he couldn't get in there. And I'm like, hold on a second. I'm not going to start doing this elitist Ivy League talk, but – Saying that someone like went to Princeton because they couldn't get into Penn is like saying that like someone is playing for the Chiefs because they couldn't make Browns. Like it, it's not commis- It doesn't make sense at all. It's terrible trash talking. You obviously went to Penn. So anyway, um, back to my body. Uh, it's okay. I did yoga this morning here, and like, there's just a lot of cracking now. Like my knee is like it's a it's like a Roman candle inside my knees. Even though I didn't blow them out, it's just like. When I bend down, like to get in a catcher's squat, it's like there's like a drum roll, and I don't know where that's coming from, but it can't be healthy. All right, so here's why I'm asking you. I was recently with a buddy, okay, and he his back like went out on him. All right, and like yeah. his back was in bad shape, and I was, you know, I, I had a back surgery in Buffalo. My back, I have back issues three times a year, so I'm helping him through it. I'm telling him, I'm giving him advice or whatever. I finally, after a, a, a day or a couple hours, I say, can I be honest? He's like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, and he did not play college football. He played high school football. I'm like, there's like a small part of me that like almost is happy that your back is bothering you like this because it makes me think, you know what? Maybe it wasn't just the seven years in the NFL. Like mm-hmm. maybe I would still have – issues just from college football like you or maybe some of the stuff is you can just be a high school football player and your back is like it almost made like the aches and pains I had from the NFL more worth it because maybe they weren't all from the NFL like maybe I would have had them anyway is, is that is that a totally warped way to look at things no like I, we, we all want to suffer in our, our misery with anybody else and that like kind of validates you plus like dude for those years you got the NFL you were you're were paid really well none of the rest of us got paid to play football we we're doing it for free so I can understand you and by the way I also know how you work and you like to keep track of everybody and what number they have and what they're this like you always have an inventory of everybody's everything so that does not make uh, a surprise for me that you wanted to hear that guy suffering it's fine I do the same thing all right last question yeah junior year we were roommates okay Mm -hmm. what do you think and there's a whole we'll do a whole other episode about college stuff but okay percentage chance when we were if I said to you Kyle 22 years from now we will both be getting paid well and have really nice careers talking about the NFL what percentage chance would you have given that when we were juniors in college neither one of us ever talking probably a single day that I can recall about being like an NFL broadcaster or whatever Mm -mm, mm mm-hmm um very 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 low you gotta understand that first of all there weren't a lot of constructive conversations in that room to begin with let's just set the stage for the listeners you're talking about six guys all college football players i was about 205 at the point at that point 205 pounds and i was the smallest of the six by probably 40 pounds (laughs) so i was like the runt of the litter because I think the next smallest was Freitag, and he was, like, ripped out of his mind back then. He was huge. <laughs> so, And then you had, like, the 300-pound club that I couldn't even approach. So I, if I even touched the remote control, let alone drank somebody's Diet Dr. Pepper, I was screwed. So I wasn't talking a lot about the future at that point. Um, and honestly, Ross, I think I would have been disappointed if, if I knew that we were going to be talking about football and making a living because – I. I like at this point I wanted to be making like Avengers movies and all that, so that didn't happen. I'm on my plan B. <laughs> I don't even know what I thought at the time. I, I always wanted to be a broadcaster growing up, but then at Prince, I guess I just thought I would do the uh, finance thing. Like you definitely else did. Does. Don't lie to the listeners, Ross. Like you were ready to like you know work for some sort of Wall Street and consulting on it because that's like 
that's that's where the river flows in Princeton. Everybody's doing that, and you're hearing that this guy's with Lehman Brothers, and this guy's this, and you're like, I guess that's what I'm supposed to do, and that's where you were going, and then I went on the, the freaking real world. It got nuts. Thank God I, I made know. the NFL. Thank and God, didn't I didn't do that. I mean, I, I I I like my life now, man. I, I, that would not have been that would. Because imagine have if you good. didn't even try. I mean, if one thing, if you tried to make the NFL and they just didn't want you, but like you very easily could have been like, screw it, I'm going to start losing weight, so I'm done with football, and I'm going to start putting a suit on. None of those helmets behind you, none of that stuff behind. You, it's all poof. It's gone. And like honestly, let's be let's be frank, Ross. You probably be do really successful. You probably have like a massive house, but like you don't have all that the helmets and the helmets. I, and I wouldn't love it as much as I love what I do now, which is getting a chance to talk with someone like you 14 hours into the future. <laughs> Here's the best thing you can do. Follow him yeah. on social media at Kyle Brandt. That way when he has awesome clips from Good Morning Football, you can watch him and you should watch that show. That way when you get a new 10 ringers, 10 ringers, 10 questions episode yep. on The Ringer, you can watch or listen. And that's how you'll be the first one to find out what his exciting assignment is. Uh, one of my best friends in the world. I love him. Kyle Brandt. Thank you so much, Kyle. Love you. Good night. I'm going to sleep. <laughs> it's good morning. It's, by the way, Kyle, I mentioned this earlier. He needs to be on ExpressVPN right now. Like, you got to keep your data private when you go online. He's in a different country. You know, they could go ahead and they could go in and they could find out, you know, what websites he's on. I think he's by himself right now in Australia. I have a guess what websites he could probably be on. Look, ExpressVPN, when I'm in a hotel or the airport, my connection gets rerouted through an encrypted server and my IP address is masked. You get a random IP address shared with other VPN customers. It makes it more difficult for third parties to identify you, to harvest your data. So if, like me, you believe that your data is your business, secure yourself with the number one rated VPN on the market. Visit expressvpn.com slash Tucker and get three extra months for free. That's EXPRESSVPN.com slash Tucker. Go to expressvpn.com slash Tucker to learn more. Tuck Stakes. Morning, Ross. Well, uh, let's start with some league wide news uh, that uh, we'll talk about. Since Thursday's show, here's what's happened. Um, NFL looking poised to keep some of their roster rules from last season including 16 players on practice squads and unlimited guys coming back off of IR. I kind of thought they would do this, Bri. This is really terrific for everybody. I mean, 16 practice squad spots? You're talking now about 69 guys that essentially make a team. 53 active roster, 16 practice squads, 69. That's a lot more paid opportunities for guys to be able to be in the NFL, I love that. There was five guys on the practice squad when I started. So you're going from 58 to 69. And on and off IR, unlimited means they actually have more than that. Because you can have a guy on IR for three weeks, bring him back. Used to be had to be on IR for at least eight weeks. Used to be if you went on IR, you're done. So all of these are ways to have more guys be on rosters, which I love. Tuck Stakes. The NFL is going to be halting the practice of race norming as it relates to the concussion settlement lawsuit. And Andrew Brandt talked with uh, Chris Seeger, the uh, the head of that uh, uh, lawsuit. Oh, that's awesome. I love that. Yeah, I mean, I'll let you guys check out Andrew's Business of Sports podcast to talk about that uh, and the concussion settlement lawsuit. I know um, it's been in the news. Obviously, they're going to go back and reevaluate all of the guys' assessments for which they had the race norming initially, which is an expression or a term, I must be honest, I never heard of until this. Tux takes. NFLPA also issued a statement recommending no more usage of Tordal among players, which I know you kind of relied on, right? Well, yeah, so I'm, I'm a little confused by this. I read the statement. 
the first time I read it, it made it sound like they don't want you to take Tordal. Like they don't want players taking Tordal because of excessive bleeding. But then I read it again and it seemed like maybe they just wanted to take it orally and not get it injected. So Tordal is like a total body systemic anti-inflammatory and uh, it's amazing how well it works. It, it's it's honestly amazing how well it works. I, you know, I, I'll never forget, Bri, I never saw it once in my life until I was in the NFL. You know, you know, we didn't do that in college in the Ivy League. You get to the NFL, first game, I look over, there's like six guys in line getting uh, shots in their butt. And I remember thinking, what is that? Is that cortisone? Because like I had heard of cortisone. Cort no, it's not. Cortisone is you inject in a specific injury, in a specific area, and it sort of like numbs the area. Tordal is like the best total body anti-inflammatory you've ever gotten. And I got to tell you, um, there are games where I don't know if I could have played without the shot of Tordal. 2004, when I had the herniated disc in my back, uh, that helped tremendously. So it's interesting. I tweeted this at Ross Tucker NFL last week. I guess I'm just surprised that now after at least 20 years, I don't know, it might be 30 years, at least 20 years, I'm surprised that now is the first time that they're, that they're realizing there's an issue with it. I don't know what players are going to do if they're not able to get those Tordal shots because – those uh, that got me playing time bonuses that got me a chance to play in games. I otherwise wouldn't have. So that's interesting. Tux takes. Uh, some other news includes Doug Flutie has announced the USL USL USFL is coming back in 2022 and the Raiders signed Sam Young. Sam Young's been around a while at this point. So kudos to him. I think, Mike Mayock, the Raiders GM, called Sam Young as games when he was at Notre Dame. In fact, I'm pretty sure he did. As for the USFL, I, I you know what I don't understand, Bry? I don't understand why, like, the XFL, which is reportedly still a thing and coming back next year, and the AAF and the USFL, like, whoever is the money and the ideas and the thoughts behind these, why don't they come all come together and pool all of their resources so that they really have everything? Anybody that's interested in the second league, they have all the resources. It's like they keep trying these one offs rather than pulling their resources. I don't, I, I do think that you can have a spring professional football league that can have success. I think enough people watch AAF, enough people watch XFL, that if they stuck with it, you could have some success. I just don't know. You know, if you only do it for one year, that's not long enough. AAF had financial issues. XFL had the COVID. I just don't know. USFL, hopefully they'll have neither. I just don't know. I don't even know who the backing is. Sounds like Fox Sports is behind it, which is good. Shout outs, by the way. Pizza Boy Brewing, Sportaculture, Vision Comics with an X, HumanHeadNYC.com. Certainly check out the College Draft Podcast today. Emery Hunt and I went over every pick in the NFC East. Great interview with Kyle Brandt. Hopefully you guys really enjoyed that one. Other than that, I think we're done here. Thanks for listening to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Fantasy Feast, Even Money, Business of Sports, and College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found. A lot of times on the show, I mentioned DraftKings. Here's what you need to know. You got to be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 100Gambler or in Indiana, 1-800-9 with it by the way if what i was talking about included a deposit bonus it doesn't always sometimes it does deposit bonus requires 25 times playthrough and deposit bonuses are paid out in site credit 